All right, today on Ammo Science, we're gonna be making rocket fuel. So you're gonna need three ingredients. Stump remover. This could be found at like uh, Menards or a Dix. Uh, you're also gonna need some sugar. Uh, powdered sugar is probably the best way to go. Granular sugar is gonna work too, but not as well. And then lastly, you're gonna want some rust. This will help with the burn time. You don't necessarily need this, but it's great to have. Okay, so first step, you usually want to have a 60 to 40 ratio. And we've gone ahead and measured everything out. We're going to be making a 100 gram batch. So this is the potassium nitrate. Kind of looks like little granules like that. And we're actually doing a 65, 35 batch, 65% potassium nitrate. As you can see, there's 62 grams there, potassium nitrate. Here's powdered sugar should be reading 34 grams it's okay the scale is pretty bad 34 grams of powdered sugar and then we have our rust and we should have about four grams of that which we do so we're all set to start making the fill and you'll see that in a short second so now we're going into the cooking part so here we have all our ingredients this is the sugar the potassium the rust and one more ingredient you need for this stuff is water you don't necessarily need it, but we discovered over many batches that we made that using water to mix the potassium and sugar is the best way to do so. So, the first step is to put both your potassium and sugar in a saucepan with it on high. And during this step, you will also add the water. Add as much water as you need to dissolve it's already boiling to dissolve as all the sugar so this should be more than enough and don't worry about the potassium nitrate not dissolving if you have granules like we do because over time of it cooking it will slowly dilute itself just like the sugar and what this is doing is basically making a nice mixture between the sugar and the potassium which you wouldn't really get if you if you did this without water, which is what we experienced, like we said. So this is what we like to call the first phase, I guess, is just mixing everything together. After this, we're going to go into boiling, which it should be soon. All right, so while the field's cooking, what you want to do is make an end cap for the rocket motor. And the end cap is basically something that holds uh, the fuel that's combusting right here in the chamber so it's not blowing out the other side. So what you want to do is find like a pipe or any container that you're going to put your fuel inside of. Usually you want it cylindrical, it could be PVC, cardboard, or even like a plastic, like a plexiglass. And so what I want to do is get some duct tape. And this is just regular duct tape, nothing special. And what you want to do is you want to take the duct tape and just plop it over the ends like this. Make sure you cover the end completely so there's no holes so you might want to use two to three strands of duct tape total. So oh my god. Need some quality duct tape here. So it may not look pretty but it gets the job done. So now what you're gonna do is just check for any holes by looking down the barrel. And as you can see there's no holes. So what we're going to do now is fill up the uh, cylinder with bentonite clay, which looks like this. This is kitty litter. It's often mashed, or what you want to do is mash it up into like a fine powder, because when you compact it, it tends to stick together. So let's go ahead and uh, fill the cylinder up. It's quite easy. You usually want about like an inch. It kind of depends on how big your cylinder is. And then what you want to do is grab a rod, kind of like this, and just a mallet or something to smash down the clay into or compact it. And you don't want to hit it super hard, just small taps, and that'll make it a lot easier. And you want to do the clay in small doses. so. Just keep adding clay until you're, you feel that you're about an inch. And 
And also, a uh, side note is to keep the bottom surface flat because that's what you're compacting the clay into. So the clay is going to take a mold from that flat ground. Or that's what you want, ideally. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more. And we're almost set. Alright, so when you're done with all the, with ramming the clay in, simple check. Just take your cylinder, pour it out. There should be a little clay that comes out, but not all of it. And then another thing is you want to make sure the surface that you just nailed to, or I mean uh, hammered down the clay into, is flat and not angled. Otherwise that can cause like a thrust imperfection. So now we're heading towards the boiling stage. You can see that now there's bubbles going underneath the actual mixture. This is ba basically the starting of this phase, but later on you'll start seeing bubbles go on top. And following that phase, you'll see you'll soon see a film go over the water, but t that usually takes a while until most of the water boils out. So now it looks like we're entering stage three. Stage three, there will be a bunch of boiling bubbles, but also you would notice is that there's starting to be a film, if you can see. And at this stage, it's important to you to keep mixing because you don't want any of this film to stack up on the edges of the water because then the sugar in the film, as we call it, will start to caramelize. And then we're trying to keep this mixture from caramelizing until we at least add the rust. Due to some minor inconvenience, we spilled a lot of our batter, but we still got managed to save some. Eventually, your batter should, or um, the liquid should boil out mostly, so it, you come to a mixture looking like this. It'll be uh, kind of like potato mushy, but uh, you'll still want to play around with it for a while until you feel comfortable to add rust. Uh, when you have a lot more than what we do, uh, you'll end up having to use some type of oil. We have here an oil, uh, like a vegetable oil or a spray on non-sticking oil type thing. And you'll want to uh, spray your uh, spatula so that it doesn't stick so much. Uh, with the amount we have here, we're probably just going to place a little bit of rust. So I'll take a spoon here and pour a little bit of rust on here. Uh, I'll say about this much should be fine. All right, and then once you put the rust in, it's kind of just like playing with Play-Doh. You just mix it around with everything and wait until, or and keep mixing around until it's a nice brownish color, kind of like caramel. All right, so now after uh, mixing a bit, you you should have something looking like this. Usually when we have a big batch, we like to take a piece about like maybe this big and we save it for testing, but since that convenience uh, or inconvenience We'll just use this and use this as a test overall and just burn it for you guys to see how good this fuel is All right, so here we brought it over to a stump uh, So this would be how big our test pieces were would be and uh, it's still a little warm when it's warm You could it's still a little moldable and uh, depending on how high your uh, heat tolerance is uh, You could probably mess around and mold with mold it. So here it is and we're gonna light it up uh I'm not really sure if this piece exactly is uh, still has a lot of moisture, but we'll find out right now when we light it up. Yeah, by the looks of it, it has a lot of moisture. Now, if you had a, a bigger batch like we usually do, uh, you would probably be able to keep it on the pan longer and get rid of most of the moisture. Uh, usually longer it is on there, uh, it'll burn fit quite quicker, but since this little piece had a lot of moisture, it took a long time for it to ignite. But uh, overall, it's pretty good. Stay tuned for future uploads. We'll be sure to upload another video featuring how we cook this very quickly, but this time, uh, the next upload, we'll actually try uh, using the fuel in a rocket or a homemade rocket to see how much thrust we can get out of it.